Hi Ed, how are you doing? Hi Stefan, I'm doing good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, really good, thanks. So where, where are you speaking to me from today? You, you in LA? No, 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 I'm in uh, North Hearts, mate, in, in England. Oh, nice. Oh, not too far. I'm in Tottenham, so we're not too far away from each other. <laughs> nice, man. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to sort of get started. I mean, I, I just wanted to know, because obviously we're speaking today primarily about, about Dark Game. How, what, how did you kind of come to be involved in that project? And what was it that really sort of enticed you in? Yeah, so Tom George, the producer, he and I did a movie a few years back, a World War II thing. Uh, I love Tom. Had a great experience working with him. He said, look, I've got this other thing. Do you want to take a read? <clears throat> I said, sure. And it was one of those movies that I kind of always wanted to, well, number one, that I would watch. Number two, that I wanted to play in because um, I, I feel like these detective things are just like super intriguing. It, you're super curious about what that life is like because they exist in a world and see a side of humanity that very few of us really see. Um, and then in this movie, it, it's really, really extreme. So there was all sorts of curiosity going on for me. Um, and I thought, yeah, okay, let's, let's, let's talk about this. Let's, let's do it. So we, we went over the script, we, uh, you know, figured out some bits and pieces and we made the movie. So super happy. Yeah. I mean, like you make, there is something constantly compelling about detective led shows, be it TV series or movies. I just wanted to know, I'm interested when you play a detective or a cop in a film, do you find your kind of other reference points, other TV and film characters? Because it's become a character that's become so, sort of so ingrained into kind of cinematic storytelling. Or do you still try to seek to find like to, to look into real life detectives and, and try and find out the inner workings of the actual real life profession? I mean, I don't, you know, the thing is, is because it's what's happening in the story. If it was like procedural or there was something going on or there was like, there was some detail that needed to be, that I needed to learn and I needed specific experience, then sure. But really, what am I dealing with here? I'm dealing with a person who has a motivation to stop something, to to, to find somebody and, you know, is going through the emotions involved in that for him. And that's all just human stuff. So I just started there and just went with that. There's nothing that all you all he is is a he's a let's erase the word detective. Because you're not seeing so much of the how does he find him, you know, that's all done by cyber crimes and it's all done by the other thing. It's more, and that's how it's done in this day and age. Um, but it's more about if we take away the, the job and take away the label, who is it? It's a man trying to find another man and him and all of this freaked out shit that's going on. That's all it is. It's two humans, you know? So I, I didn't watch like a bunch of other detective stuff, uh, movies or whatever before, you know, because also I don't want to be influenced by what somebody else is doing. And if you like, if you if you do that and it's fresh, you I think inevitably you're going to be somewhat of a sponge and soak up what you just saw. So I just kind of went with what I what I had what I had in me, you know, and went with that. And so that's it's my version of 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 this guy. Obviously, the script informs you and gives you parameters. Um, so so that's it. You know, had if we'd had another kind of another five pages where he's talking about his life and talking about something else, then you might have seen more of that. But, you know, the script is your is your road, you know, and you just drive down the road. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, the film shines a light on the kind of very dark and twisted side to the Internet. I think we all fear it exists, but we sort of pray that it doesn't. But does, does the Internet ever frighten you? I mean, it feels like there's a lot of shit going on out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it does, but... I try not to look at it, like, look at it like that. Or, I mean, look, bad shit's always gone on, right? It's just like now there might be more of it or we know more about it because guess what? We can transfer information so easily, but it's it's always been there. I mean, humanity, we're weird, man. We're weird, weird creatures, you know? We can be really good and then we can be really, really bad, you know? So... It's um, it's 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 an odd time to live in, 
Um, but then again, just life in general and being human and being on this planet is odd. It's very strange. But, you know, I think hopefully we can just kind of do some do some good stuff, you know. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's weird. I try not to look at dark shit. I know some people enjoy looking at it, but I try not to. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I, you know, I've even got so sensitive these days, even now if I watch like nature shows and you see some sort of like poor little animal struggling to find its mum, I can't even watch that now. I'm getting into a rock. Oh, that's the worst. That's the worst. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's the worst. Yeah. Yeah, but it's Terrible. interesting. I, I did an interview earlier today as well, actually. And we're sort of speaking about kind of like, um, obviously the notion of playing kind of good characters and bad characters. You spoke about this film that can show kind of, there, there's we know that there's goodness in humanity and there's badness in humanity. But as an actor, your job is to kind of play every type of person, every type of situation. Do you think it can give you quite a good perspective on the world that you live in when your job is to wear so many hats? It's an interesting question. Um, I think... Maybe, yes, because you're forced or you're just, I think, you, you know, as an actor, you kind of naturally have to be aware. So, um, and then it kind of in, enhances that perhaps or um, that part of your brain. So yes is, is the short answer because yeah, you're forced to be more aware and like expand your thoughts in terms of what is a person thinking about, you know, from a different walk of life. So yeah, definitely. Uh, do I then I'm gen I'm generally empathetic anyway. So I wouldn't say that it kind of has enhanced that even more. Like I, I you know, I'm constantly thinking about other or what other people are thinking or something like that. But I am an empathetic person and maybe that's what helps me or made me naturally inclined to want to be an actor. So Definitely, it makes you more aware, though, definitely. But I, I, I don't think I could solve the world's problems if I was, you know, made uh, chief social worker of planet Earth. I, don't, I wanted to ask as well, about because obviously there's, there's there's quite a lot sort of going on. I know Deep Fear is another one that was only released quite recently. Or sort of, that's sort of very much kind of in the sort of, you know, it's, it's been a very recent project at least. I mean, how was that experience shooting that? Because obviously you've got like Dark Game is very much kind of like in the, it's in kind of police stations or dark rooms and stuff. Deep Fear, of course, takes us right out into the complete opposite to that. What was what was that experience like sort of shooting that, shooting that movie? It's amazing. I they we did them back to back. I did Deep Fear in Malta, which was set in the Caribbean, and then I did Dark Game in the UK, which was set in the US, and just went from one to the other, which was great. And like, I don't know whether I prefer having a little gap because I'm speaking about another movie straight away after another movie. And the thing with Deep Fear was like we had the initial release, and then it went on Netflix, so it was like two releases. And of course, with these independent movies as well. The, the distribution's all over the place at different times. I'm trying to communicate that to my fans and followers. Like, oh, it's out here today. It's out there today. Which is frustrating from my point of view, but I don't have any say over the distribution deal. I wish I did. Um, and then, so yeah, it's like, it's it, it was great. I mean, in terms of the scope of the movies, yeah, they're two very different ones. I mean, one's entirely outdoors and the other one's in dark rooms, as you say, you know? I mean, it's... It couldn't be more different, but there's definitely a thrilling um, aspect to them both for two totally different reasons. Um, you know, I think they're both kind of mass market movies, um, you know, especially in this day and age where people are just drinking up true crime and just loving this stuff. You know, I mean, it, there's a real appetite for it. And I, 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 I get it because I'm one of those people as well. You know, me and my fiance, Amy, will watch that stuff as well. It's, it's something really, what does that say about the human psyche? You know, that we, because I would say, oh, it's like watching it from a safe distance, but you don't know if it's a safe distance because some shit might go down, you know? So you don't really know, you know, but it's, it's fascinating. We are very, very interesting creatures. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned about obviously not having like the say on like distribution deals and stuff, but I've noticed for like Tonic this year, you are sort of going into the producing role. So I'm just interested, is that something you've been quite keen to do to kind of get more involved in that, in the kind of behind the scenes and, and, and those kind of conversations where you do have to talk about things like distribution and stuff like that? A hundred percent, man. Like on some of these smaller movies, like if I, you know, I, I, I if I feel like I can help in a bigger capacity, um, 
than I I would love to be. And and I I do feel like, you know, I offer a lot. Well, I I bring some added value if you if we're kind of coming in early and developing a script because I've got a lot of experience. So I definitely feel like that's one thing. And then um, and 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 just the overall process. I mean, I'm not, you know, as experienced. I'm not experienced when it comes to the 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 second half of it, which is selling the movie or anything like that or distribution. But from now, my experience with like a deep fear and everything like that, and the way it was so fragmented and trying to communicate that to people who want to watch the movie, I would be like, hey, look, my experience is it's probably a little bit frustrating for people who want to watch the movie in one place on one day, you know, so how do we do it differently? Yeah, I mean, so, so how the kind of the, is the next kind of year or two sort of looking for you? And I'm interested to know if that if you even perceive things kind of on those terms as an actor, have you kind of always had to learn to just look at things project to project? Or do you ever give yourself these kind of like the aims for 2024 or 2025 and kind of see and look at things in a kind of, yeah, as things to kind of tick off? Or, or do you just have to go, have you learned to not be able to, to not do that so much? It's, I, no, it's a bit of both, really, to be honest. Like, I have to, you have to plan because you have life, right, to do. So you have to be like, okay, when am I working? When am I going to make money? You know, because we all have to make money. So it's like, um, so that's a real thing. But it's also just managing the un, the un, uh, managing the un, unpredictable um, nature of this job, for sure, because you can be like, get a project, yes, it's happening, it's happening, and then it doesn't happen or, or something like that, you know? So you really can't plan 100%, but you can just do your best and then be flexible. Uh, the next year, I've got like three or four things being offered to me, which is amazing. And we'll just see which happens first, you know? Um, they're, again, all very different characters. So super, super exciting. And that's what I want to keep doing. I want to keep demonstrating you know, that I can do all this different stuff, but I'm doing it for me and for people to see me in this different light, you know? And one day when I look back and I'm 80 years old, I can say, hey, look, all of these things that I was part of, you know? Of course, I mean, like one of the things that you were a part of that still has such a huge support of the of course, is Gossip Girl. I just wondered, I'm interested to know, is there like ever a sense when, you, when you've been in something that has created a fan base that's that strong and also is still collect, constantly bringing in new fans because of it being on streaming, is there almost a sense of like surrendering to it? I mean, because I know some actors kind of fight against, fight, can fight back against sort of certain roles or you hear actors say, oh, I don't want to be known for this, whatever. but ultimately, is do you sort of learn to think this is a sign of affection when fans latch onto a character and is it something that ultimately you have to embrace and is that a process you do have to go to when there is a role that popular i fucking love it it's amazing it fucking is i was on i was in london earlier today i was walking along i had my hood up because it was raining and this 12 year old 12 year old i swear she was 12 year old 12 she was with her mother went ah i went ah hi and she went can i have a picture with you i went yeah of course I was like 12 years old. I'm like, well, the fucking Gossip Girl finished like 12 years ago. Like what? It blows my mind. Blows my mind. I, I I do these fan conventions where I go and I meet these people who love Gossip Girl and other stuff. And they'll be there to meet other actors and celebrities, whatever. But we take pictures, we do Q&As, we do panels. And these people are amazing. And we talk about the show. We talk about other stuff. And it blows my mind that we're still doing this and the show like is trending on Netflix like every couple of weeks or whatever. And it's just like, what is going on? It's just crazy. So I I am so, so, I've, it's like a weird thing. It's like I've got all of these people in the world that watch this show and it meant something to them and they'll still talk about it. It's like having, it's like having like, I don't know, I'm just thinking about it now. It's like, say you went on a vacation years ago or you went to a summer camp or something like that and you had these buddies and you shared this amazing experience with. It's like that with the fans because we've all shared this experience of Gossip Girl, you know, which is nuts. It's nuts, man. I mean, I don't I, I, I don't know. It's, it's just nuts. There's no way to, like, I mean, how cool. Like, you're lucky if you get on one, one series, let alone a hit series in your life as an actor. And then to have something that's had the longevity of this, 
is mental. It's absolutely mental. So I don't know. I'm just, I'm in awe. It's like a phenomenon to me. I'm in awe of, of what it's done and the impact it's had. It's just, it's more than a show. It's crazy. Did you foresee when when you were making it? Did you foresee it having that kind of? Because I guess you can never tell as an actor, but could you tell you were onto to onto a winner in that regard? Could you see yourself? Yeah, we people? could. We could when it was well. It had some fundamental ingredients that made it ready for success, and that was the fact that it had the writers of the OC, which had already been a hit. The fact that it was a popular series of books. So that was like, okay, cool. We're on to, you know, good, good ingredients there. And then it just became its own thing, man. And just went on and on and it was fantastic. So, I mean, it, you know, when I, it, the funny thing is, is when you're filming it and you're in real time, I don't think you appreciate what you, not appreciate, I appreciated that I was on the show, but you don't appreciate the impact it's having. Or, and you obviously can't know that it, 10, 15 years later, we're gonna still be talking about it because you're just rolling with it. And I was a different person then. I was much younger. I was 19 to 25 when I was on the show. And now I have the luxury of experience and age and hindsight and everything like that to reflect on it. And I'm in awe. I'm in awe of just having been part of something that was, as I say, so massive. Well, I think that's the right approach to have. I, I like, I've always liked it when actors just embrace a character and the fandom that comes with it. I think when you, you said when you're 80 years old, I think when you're 80 years old, you'll still be meeting people that talk to you about it. <laughs> Why not? Why yeah. not? Let's do it. Anyway, brilliant. Well, Ed, thank you so much for speaking to me today. It's been a real pleasure. And best of luck with the release of, of the movie. Maybe we'll catch up again one day. I hope so, Stefan. Take cool. care, buddy. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, hey you guys! <laughs> hey you guys! <laughs> Hey, that's what they all say. Hey, you guys. Hey.